Philippians chapter number 3, verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I want to preach for just a few minutes, the Lord to hit me, on attacked from behind. Attacked from behind. This one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Memories. Memories. We all enjoy memories, don't we? I mean, memories can be one of the most cherished escape routes a man could ever have. Sometimes, if you can't physically... Do it. You can have a memory of doing it a time before. And sometimes we enjoy memories. I mean, we it's utterly impossible for us to go back and relive experiences that's happened. And we've all said things different. We can't. We can't go back. We can't. But for us to physically go back and relive those experiences, we can't do it. It's impossible. But we can remember, and we have memories, and we like to think about good memories and pleasant memories. We like to reenact our vacation sometimes when we can't do it now. At least we can have memories of one we had before. We like to uh, remember fishing trips. and or I went fishing with Brother Hobby a few months ago, and I don't care about remembering that one. Cause he outdone me. But anyhow, sometimes we, we like to think about moments that we spent with our family, moments, uh, camp meetings. I mean, we, we, we all enjoy memories. And sometimes it's good to just go back and think about things and remember things. But I'm going to tell you something. There's, there's, a, there's a problem, I think, that I feel like the Lord dealt with me about to preach to you this morning. Amen. And I want you to understand that instead of memories... Uh, causing us to have pleasure. And instead of memories, causing us to be happy. Amen. There's some of us that's got a problem with remembering the wrong kind of thing. Amen. Did you know that instead of memories providing for you an escape route and making you feel joyous and making you feel pleasant, if you ain't careful, memories can bring back a haunt to you. Memories can bring back facial expressions. Memories can bring back words. Memories can bring back messages that's been preached. Memories can bring back attitudes. And instead of providing you a pleasant feeling, there's some things I want you to understand that we think about too much. There's things that's happened in the past. I want you to understand we got a problem with folks being haunted and tormented and vexed and being attacked from things. Things uh, that happened years ago. Uh, things that happened months ago. Uh, and I'll tell you what the problem is. Uh, we are absolutely being uh, attacked from behind. Did you know that right now the reason some of you hate worship us to worship... Right now you're looking at somebody. Right now you're thinking about somebody. Right now you're remembering something somebody said. And instead of this camp meeting drawing you closer to God, you thought this would be the avenue to get everything straight and get everything fixed. And bless God, express my opinion and show them that I'm right. I want you to understand we are being attacked. And it's not things that we're facing, not necessarily present, day problems, uh, but it's things from behind, uh, things we should have prayed over, uh, things we should have got victory over, uh, but the devil is using it to attack us now. Great God. 
Oh, Lord. Do you know, if you think about what they said long enough, it's going to vex you. If, if you think about the way they looked when they said that, that's going to get to you. Yeah, come on now. Hey, Amen. I want you to understand. I think we got enough problems right now. I think we got enough devils right now. I think we got enough present day problems right now. Without lingering in the past and digging up bones. Great God, I think we all have church. And let the past go. And let the memories go. Let those bad experiences go. It's time we quit being attacked from behind. I don't need a little time this morning. But oh God, I want to preach to you. I feel a burden on my heart. If you are not careful, you're going to let something sneak up on you from behind. It's going to attack your spirit. Amen. It's going to get to that character that used to be good. It's going to get to that personality that everybody enjoyed being around. I tell you what, Brother Paul Blanton, it's time we do like the Bible said and forget those things which are behind. Great God, I'm glad for memories, but if it's a bad memory, I don't need it. If it's a bad memory that's going to affect my worship and affect my life and affect my ministry, I say I don't need it. I don't need it. There are thousands of things in my past that I'm afraid of. Thousands of things. And I'm only 27 years old. But there's things in my past that if I ain't careful, it'll get to me. Oh, God. Oh, God. I remember standing on the front porch of a church where I was raised. And I seen them swing at one another. I mean, I've seen a man come up and gonna just punch his sister's lights plumb. Uh, I mean, plumb out. I remember sitting and watching on one side. Stand up and testify against the other side. I've seen them fight and nearly cuss. Uh, I mean, get aggravated, nearly bust the seams uh, of God's church right down the middle. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, if I want to, I can remember who said it. I can remember who done it. I can remember who's there. But I say we ain't got time. Time that we let them things go. Great God, we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. We need a revival. We need camp meeting. We need to get free. We can't afford to be attacked. There are things. You ever heard anybody? I heard about one man. I mean, two, two, two preachers riding down the road. And one preacher mentioned this other man's name. Don't say that name. And, and he said, you mean, so don't say that name. Come on now, you know it's right. You know it's right. Oh, God. Oh, God. The past to some has become a foe instead of a friend, instead of a pleasurable experience. It's something that will cause us to, amen, to backslide. It causes bitterness. It will cause strife. It will cause sin to rule and reign. Great God, won't you let it go? I said, won't you let it go? Why don't you pray through and repent and get a hold of God and let that thing go? To some, the past has become a foe. To some, the past is memories of misery. Oh, God. To some, the past is a textbook of tyrants. Oh, God. And you know what the problem is? The problem ain't so much that it happened. The problem ain't so much that they said it. The problem ain't so much that they did it. The problem is we ain't forgetting it. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Great God, y'all gonna help me preach. I want you to know there's a tool that the devil's using us. He ain't gonna be right in front of you all the time. He's not gonna show up every front in front of you every time. But he's coming to us from behind. I said he's attacking us from behind. And we're backsliding. And we're getting cold. And preachers are falling. And we're losing out with God. Oh, because we're being attacked. 
from behind. Let me ask you a question. Why should we be governed by the past? That's the problem. Oh God, we're letting the past govern who our friends are. We're letting the past govern who we preach for. We're letting the past govern who we sit by, who we hug, whose hands we shake. Come on here now. Great God. I want you to understand. Uh, we're letting the past govern us. Uh, we can't forget it. Uh, but until you do, uh, you ain't never going to go forward. Uh, you ain't never going to press toward the mark. Uh, you ain't never going to get the prize uh, as long as you're attacked from behind. Uh, I said as long as you're attacked from behind. Uh, as long as those memories haunt and taunt and vex your soul. Just a little more time this morning. Oh, God. There's people, I tell you what, I ain't been out on the field very long. I'm a rookie, I guess, if that's the right term. I'm a little green. I'm going to tell you something. I don't think intimidation ought to rule over inspiration. Oh, God. You hear me? There's some preachers that use their power of intimidation. Walk up to a young evangelist. You preach for them, and don't preach for me. Oh, come on now. You go over there, you drive right on by me. You know why it's that way? It ain't necessarily that the pastor's got something against him. It's because there's a past that's attacking him. It's eating him like a cancer. It was a word. It was an experience. It was a message. And it's tearing him down. And he's taking his vengeance on everybody else. Great God, we need to repent. Great God, we need to pray through. We need to get back to God and not let the behind attack our soul. If you are governed, there's some people who won't come to Allentown because of the past. Come on now. I know one man that won't go to Bristol because of the past. It wasn't the board's fault. It wasn't the night speaker's fault. It's the devil's fault. Oh, God. Oh, God. And we got these memories that's eating on us. Oh, hallelujah. There's some of you that can remember what they said. Remember the way they said it. And if you was an artist, you could draw every wrinkle, every expression, every snarl that was on their face. Do you know why? Because you ain't forgot it. And it's still burning in your heart. Is there anybody in this house that needs to let go of the past and let go of those bad memories? You know it or not, you're being attacked. Those who are past will be like Lot's wife, crystallized in the art of looking backward and never again capable of looking forward. Oh, God. I'm going to tell you something. It don't matter who's preaching this meeting. If you got the past governing you, it don't matter how high they get it, how good they preach it, how big you shout it. Because when this meeting's over, if you ain't forgot it, it's going to attack you again. Oh, God, it's going to come right back. And you're going to have the same thing. You're going to have the same problem. You're going to have the same sin. I say, let's let go of it. I say, let's let go of it. I say, let's forget those things which are behind and quit letting the past over in our mood. This has been bothering me. Oh, God. The past. Attack from behind. You understand what that means? Well, I'm a preaching. I'm a looking forward. I got me a trailer. I got me a church. I'm looking forward. But all the time they're contending 
oh, trying to contend with forward things and things that are in the present. They always have to stop what they're doing and turn around and fight the past. I'm going to tell you what. That ain't what? That ain't no way to get revivals. That ain't no way to preach a meeting. And that ain't no way to live in the sight of God. I say we need to let go of the past. Great God, is there anybody in this house that realizes we are being attacked from behind? I said we're being attacked. We're being slain. We're being killed. We're dying lost. And it's all coming from behind. We should all agree that this present darkness, you feel it, you understand you're in it. Brother Hampton preached in Ohio, hell on the loose. You understand? What to end what time we're living in? That ain't coming later. That's now. That's a problem now. Oh God. I think we got enough problems to contend with now. Oh, we got enough problems uh, from this camp meeting to begin uh, to find the battle and the war uh, and do all the fighting you want to do uh, without sitting on that pew uh, and letting the past get to you. Uh, oh, God. Uh, oh, God. Uh, whatever happened to going to the Bible way uh, and meeting them at the altar. Uh, great God and getting that thing fixed. Uh, come on, I'm preaching this morning. You're being attacked from behind. Uh, it's going to damn your soul. Uh, you're going to lose out with God. Uh, you're going to backslide in the church. Uh, you're going to backslide in the ministry uh, as long as the past is attacking you. I mean, trials. Right now, we got enough. You got problems in your. You got problems with your loved ones. You pastors have got problems. In, we all have got enough problems now. But the attack that's causing men and women to fall. The attack that's causing preachers dust of despair. I mean the attack that's stealing eyes, brother. Oh, God is the past. You know what? I know there's a lot of debate on the tribulation and the coming of the Lord and, and all them kind of things, but it ain't necessarily facing the tribulation that's bothering you. As they said it, the way they looked when they preached it. It's killing us, you hear me? Brother Brock, it's killing us. We're losing them. We're lo I said we're losing them. Oh God, it ain't television that's getting them either. It ain't scissors that's getting them either. It ain't making them either. It's one little four-letter word called the past. And it's sneaking up on them while they're living so holy and looking so righteous. It's absolutely tearing them up and vexing their soul until they're getting out of the will of God. It ain't what we're going to see later that's bothering us. It's what we've already seen. It ain't what we've heard or what we're going to hear later. It's what we've already heard. That's what's bothering us. It ain't the future. It's the past. Come on, you've got to admit it this morning. It is, it is, it is. You came to this camp meeting wanting help, but you can't get it because you're thinking about it. You come here needing help, but you can't get in because of what happened in that last revival. Oh, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. In the upper room, they were with one mind and one accord. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. You know why? They all have their mind on right now. They have their mind on what was to come. They forgot every bit about what happened in the past. They forgot about the look on Judas's face. They forgot about the sin he done. They forgot about the attitude he had. And they got their mind on now. And the Holy Ghost came. And the power of God fell. And revival broke out. And that's what it's going to take for us to have a move of God.
two men passed through a field one day in which cattle were grazing. They walked through a nice green pasture having a wonderful conversation. And as they passed through that gate, one man left it open. You see there were cattle grazing in that gate or in that field. The other man stopped and turned around and scratched his head without saying a word. He marched back and he shut the gate. Well, the other young man said, I'm sorry, I, I mean, I didn't mean to do that. The man looked at him and said, Look, there's going to be things we've already came through that's going to escape and follow us if we don't shut the gate. Well, I came through it. Great God, I'm having revival now. I mean, I marched right on through it. I preached my way out of that one. Hallelujah. But look what's on your heels. Uh, the Bible said some men's sins are going to follow them uh, all the way to the judgment. Uh, is there anybody in this house? Uh, I say we're being attacked from behind. Uh, I say we're being snuck up on from behind. Uh, it's time we realize uh, we ain't never going to get right. Uh, ain't going to have a move of God. Uh, ain't going to have revival. Uh, ain't going to have victory uh, until we let the battle. I've closed the door on fear. He has lived with me far too long. If he were to break forth and reappear, I my eyes at the sky, sing aloud and run lightly by. He'll never follow a song. I've closed the door on gloom. His house has too narrow a view. I must seek for my soul a wider room with radiant lamps and a breeze blow through. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I'm tired of living in the past. I'm tired of fighting it. I'm tired of fighting it. It's time you turn around and preach. It's time you turn around and evangelize. It's time you turn around and pastor. It's time you turn around and live right. And forget it. I said forget it. I said let it go. And forgive the past and close the door. There's some already in this meeting. You left the gate open. And there's so many cows in here now, we can't have church. Things following us now, we can't get in. You won't never get the Holy Ghost thinking about that. You never get sanctified thinking about that. You won't never have revival thinking about to come on. Great God, Brother Watson, it's time that we let things go. I said it's time we shut the door uh, and quit letting it escape uh, and ruin our experience uh, and steal our children uh, and take our revivals uh, and bust up our churches uh, and kill our preachers. Uh, it's time we let the past go. Oh, God, I need to hurry up here. Attacked from behind. Was the writer in here, Paul, in Philippians? I don't know if this was before his contention or not. You hear me? I don't know who wrote this before his contention with that other preacher. Or if he wrote this after. But it don't matter. He saw if it ever happens to me down the road. Y'all remember, don't you? It was so sharp. They couldn't stand together. It was so sharp. They couldn't get in together. It was so sharp. They couldn't even sing. And him sat way over here. They had this fellowship. Oh, God. I don't know about you, but I know sometime or another that great preacher named Paul, I mean, he thought about that. He worried about that. He thought about that. He thought about him. Thought about losing a preacher. Thought about losing a buddy. Thought about discord. Went up there and said, forget it. Hey, Barnabas, get old Mark and bring him with me. When you come back to see me, 
Garth uh, and tell him I need him. Uh, great God, I'm going to tell you, uh, it's time we shut the door. Uh, it's time we shut the door. Uh, it's time we shut the door. Uh, it's time you close the door on the past. You might help that young preacher if you just close the door. Wonder how old Mark felt. Mel whistling, hooking up that trailer. Great God, I get to go preach him a revival. Hey Amen. I believe it lighting him up, don't you? Come on here now. We ain't got time for this. We ain't got time for such mess. Uh, the Lord's coming. Uh, I said the Lord's coming. Uh, it's time to forget it. Uh, it's time to let it go. Uh, it's time to shut the door. Uh, let's get back to God. Uh, get back to living where we ought to live. Brother Kevin, you, 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 you wasn't there. I know. I know I wasn't there. I'm glad I wasn't there. You don't know what they said to my kids. I, I, I don't know. You don't know the evil that was in their eye. I, I, I don't. I mean, I've, I can relate to some of it because I've seen others. But I'm going to tell you, well, that preacher ain't never been in a... That evangelist, I can tell right now, he ain't never... How you know? Are you the only wounded heart? Are you the only wounded soldier? Are you the only bleeding one? Great God, there's men sitting right here that would not be preaching unless they shut the door. Come on! Come on! There's evangelists who wouldn't be on the field uh, unless they'd shut the door. Uh, you can't let it get to you. Uh, if you do, it's going to kill you. Uh, it's going to destroy our movement. Uh, it's going to bust us up again. Uh, and we're going to lose more and more and more. Well, if it's hair, if it's hair, best God, I can fix that. If it's britches, I can fix that. If it's televisions, I can fix that. If it's country music, I can fix that. But what about the past? I was over in Georgia last week. There was a little old Methodist lady come to the meeting. Ever, I mean almost every night. Even left her home church, big Methodist church in town. Come out there on Sunday night. She stood up one night and testified tears running down her eyes when church was over. She said, 22 years ago, one of my twin daughters was killed in an automobile accident by a drunken driver. My baby, my girl. It killed her! She said, I wept and cried. I was mad. I hated the man that done it. I hated him. I said she hated him. And she said, Preacher, it was eating me up like a cancer. And I'm talking about a Methodist woman that don't look like some of you. She don't claim to have the Holy Ghost like you do. She don't claim to go to a holiness church like you do. She don't claim to know all about the Bible like you do. But you know what she done? She knelt down in her bathroom floor. And she said, that's the first time in my life that I ever prayed through. And she said, I asked God to forgive me and help me to forget it. And you ain't mad enough to forget it. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Oh, God. Oh, God. If a little Methodist woman that says she ain't even got the power, why can't we find us a place? Why can't we find us a place? Why can't we go to that man? Why can't we go to that woman and let it all go? He said, I forget those things which are behind. And then... Oh, revival! I 
I mean revival. I mean camp meeting. The Spirit of the Lord. The first thing you got to do is forget it. I said you got to let it go. And then you can go on. Real quick now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close. The children of Israel, you remember, in hot haste, running out from Pharaoh, Red Sea before them, wilderness behind them, Egyptians on their trail. The Bible said that angel that stood before them went around and got behind them. Come on now, listen to me. That pillar of fire that stood before them. You see, they was being attacked from behind. And you know what happened? The fire, Brother Shad, left the front of them and went to behind them. Hallelujah. You know what happened? It provided the divine screen between the attack from behind and what was in front of him. And you know what happened? Water rolled back. And they crossed over on dry ground. And Miriam got a tambourine and broke out in a revival. I'm going to tell you, when you get God between you and what's behind you, you're bound to have revival. Amen. When you get the fire of God between you and what's behind you, you're bound to get victory. You're bound to have revival. You're bound to have a move of God. You're bound to win. You're bound to be victorious. But you got to let the past go. See this man right here? Y'all in Oklahoma know. Don't you? Brother Daryl. Pastor in a church. Fifteen people. He's had problems. He's had battles. He's cried. But you know what he done? And crawled back in that pulpit. Hallelujah. Dropped down at his altar. Got him another message. Got a hold of a little more oil. Come on here. Hallelujah. He's had plenty of opportunity to leave. Uh, he had a right to resign. Uh, but he shut the door uh, and said, I'm going to love these 15 uh, like they was 115. Uh, great God, is there anybody in this house? Uh, you need to let the past go. Uh, you need to let behind go. Uh, you need to let what's happened go. Uh, quit letting it attack you. Oh, Jesus. Why are we serious about this meeting this morning? I preached revival in one place, Brother Cooper. You'll know who I'm talking about. But there was an ought between a man and a woman for seven years. She would not shake his hand for seven years. Over a little incident that she said happened seven years ago and when the truth was known and there was three or four witnesses standing around her it was all a fabricated story over the seven years and we started having an old fashioned confession service that night in revival people started standing up and turning to the church and said I'm sorry if I've done anything forgive me now you know how it goes I mean, if I don't, yeah. And it just went on and on and on. And there was such a sweet spirit fell in that place. We was all loving one another. We was all friends. I mean, we was all brother and sister. And all of a sudden, one little sister stood up. I think I know what this is all about. And she went back seven years ago and started in detail and killed the move of God and recounted the whole story as she thought it was. Finally, I went up to that man and I said, All right, brother, call him by name. Would you be willing to walk up there and say, I'm sorry? Tears running down his face. I sure would. He went up there and said, I'm sorry. She said, Well, I forgive you, wiping tears. I forgive you. I forgive you. But I still don't know why you done it. (laughs) 
We got back down. We prayed again. We prayed again. She got up wiping tears. I forgive you. But I still don't know if I want to shake your hand or not. That pastor is a man of God. I got confidence in him. He walked over to her and said, The Holy Ghost spoke to me. If you don't forget this, your children never come to holiness. But brother, they're going to church right down there. He said, I said, if you don't forget it, your children will never come back to holiness. But they've been going right down. He said, I said, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Why in the world ain't we hearing the Holy Ghost? Oh God. Whatever happened to conviction? Whatever happened to the Spirit of the Lord speaking to us? Whatever happened to God reaching His omnipotent hand out from between the glories of heaven and shaking us until we were senseless and getting our attention? It's time we forget it. It's time we forget it. Do you want revival? Do you want to move to God? Do you want the power of God? Then you have got to let the past go. Stand with me this morning. Let's lift our hands all over this building. And if you need to fix it, fix it. If you need to fix it, fix it. If you need to pray, then great God, pray. If you need to repent, then repent. If you need to apologize, then do it. If you need to say, I'm sorry, then do it. You got to let the past go. Let's worship God here for a minute, could we? Lift your hands and worship God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I wish somebody to jump up and run and shut that door a little bit, don't you? Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like to.